the reason we started Campbell Neurosciences is because my mother fell victim to suicide when I was four. I was always told that my mom went to hell, and I didn't believe that. I, I couldn't believe that. And then one of my very close family members also committed suicide when I was 11. This is something that is near and dear to everybody, the subject of suicide. And, uh, you know, there's, everybody's been touched by it one way or another in life. Whether it was some star you loved or some football player, everybody has been touched by suicide. No matter what everybody in my family told me, no matter what people at Catholic school told me, what people at church told me, I didn't agree with them. I knew that there was something with suicide that was not a choice, that these people were amazing, and that there was something there that was lacking. This situation demands our immediate attention and focus, especially in the midst of the pandemic. On average, in America, 130 people kill themselves every day. And my mother was one of them when I was four. And here at Campbell Neurosciences, we are aiming to make sure that it doesn't happen anymore. Back in 2018, before the pandemic, 10.7% of young adults reported having suicidal thoughts in the previous 30 days. As of August 2020, that amount had grown to greater than 26%. And as the pandemic continues and economic distress gets worse, it's expected that that amount could grow to as high as 40%. That would be four out of every 10 young people having suicidal thoughts. Now more than ever, the work of Campbell Neuroscience is important. We've now been able to detect suicidal ideation before the thought has occurred. Campbell Neuroscience has developed biomarkers that identify particular chemicals, proteins, and cytokines that have been identified to be at higher levels or at lower levels when people are suffering of depression and anxiety. We pattern against a score, and depending on the amount of that molecule you have in your brain, is how we score you on the Campbell score. Well, the Campbell score is based on identifying from the blood specific proteins, which end up being found in the blood as the brain starts presenting difficulties. This is before they had suicidal ideations as a predictive marker. This marker is a specific protein that can be measured within the blood in a quantitative manner. We've just completed a clinical trial that involved 30 volunteer patients. The first 10 were healthy individuals. The second 10 had suicidal ideations but did not act upon them. The last 10 both had suicidal ideations and acted upon them. What we discovered was that those who had suicidal ideations in general had a three times higher Campbell score than healthy individuals. When looking at those who had both ideations and acted upon them, they had approximately a six times higher Campbell score than our original group of healthy volunteers. That leads us to believe that the Campbell score correlates with propensity to suicide. So at the future of Campbell Neurosciences, right now we're focusing very strongly on getting the Campbell score to the psychiatrists. We want to make psychiatry responsible for the organ that they are treating. Psychiatry is the only medical profession that does not have to monitor the organ that they are treating. The way that they're dealing with patients it hasn't really changed much since the beginning of psychology. And we're aiming to help psychiatrists do something different. So they can still use the medications that really do help people, but they can now add the Campbell score and what we're doing here at Campbell Neurosciences to really make sure that it's effective. That being said, we have numerous projects, therapeutic projects, where we're trying to address mental illness, not as a Band-Aid, but actually addressing the root cause, which is the neurons malfunctioning. What Campbell Neurosciences is now doing with its suicide ideation research, it is no less dramatic and revolutionary in that it is taking us the next step along the path to conquering mental illness by addressing the biological, inflammatory, and immunological roots of this disorder. We are trying to end the stigma related to suicide. It's a very uncomfortable conversation. You know, nobody wants to talk about it. It's, everybody's affected by it, whether they want to admit it or not. It's extremely uncomfortable, and we are trying to end that. Now, listen, the most important thing is the, is the 
a non-stigmatization of, of these patients, right? They don't need to be labeled crazy anymore. It, it's crazy to us that, that we can fix that. We want to let everybody who's affected, whether it be somebody who has suicidal ideations, who has acted on suicidal ideations, whose loved one has attempted or maybe succeeded with those suicidal ideations. We want everybody to know that there's a reason behind it. Nobody's done this before, and we're doing it.